research for the project was looking at two historical moments, mainly Ghana and Tanzania in the immediate post-colonial period. It has relevance for countries across the continent today. Because the question, how do you create a coherent society where people from different origins could be united by material conditions and the aspiration for a different, more equitable future is one that every country on the African continent is confronted with today. And indeed the research is even more relevant today in view of the impacts of the coronavirus disease across Africa. As we speak, the rate of infection is increasing by the day. The impact of coronavirus is largely on the poor and working class. And this is from actual rates of infection to loss of employment and the collapse of small businesses on which many poor and working class people in Africa subsist. These are the categories of people who do not have the luxury to work from home, you know, as we are doing right now, having this webinar, we speaking, and you colleagues joining us for discussions. <laughs> Particularly hit by the coronavirus pandemic are migrants, refugees, and displaced persons who do not have the familial network that can support them in moments where regular means of livelihood is no longer accessible. While some states on the continent have rolled out relief packages for the most vulnerable in the form of uh, food vouchers, uh, non-citizens and migrants are excluded from these uh, relief packages. Displaced persons and refugees, for example, um, who are not catered for by the UNHCR, have no place in the relief packages across the continent. So the question of solidarity therefore becomes important here because as COVID bites, we are also seeing mobilizations along nationalist uh, 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 tendencies that seek to identify those who do not belong, not just to deny them access to basic necessity, but to actually victimize them as you know, those who undermine our effort to tackle this uh, pandemic. So these narratives, in a sense, identify people, most of whom are incredibly vulnerable uh, in these moments, uh, and try to, to victimize them. And therefore, the question of solidarity becomes important here. Uh, the COVID-19 crisis is revealing that exclusion is not a way out. Because if one segment of society is excluded or denied access to food or running water, which we know is an essential uh, component of the fight against COVID. Um, if this uh, essential component of the fight against COVID is denied people on the basis of their citizenship, uh, actually the entire society is placed at risk because what will eventually happen is that a vector for the expansion of the disease is being cultivated by this exclusion, which will later undermine any effort at curbing the spread of the disease. But I also want to emphasize that migration on the African continent has always been the norm. The livelihood structures in Africa have always been far flung. People move across sub-regions, not just within countries and across countries, but across sub-regions for hundreds of years. So migration is integral to the making of livelihood structures of Africa. It is this realization that um, led to many sub-regions in Africa to initiate protocols to manage the movement of people. So you have um, in ECOWAS, for example, the, 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 the free movement uh, protocol that allows people to move within West African countries uh, for 90 days to settle, but also to establish uh, businesses. You have the same thing in SADC and Southern African sub-region. Now, what happens very often 
is that there is a contradiction between the provisions of these sub-regional uh, protocols and national legislations. Some national legislations carve out sections of the economy for only citizens and therefore contradict the provisions of uh, 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 sub-regional frameworks that allow citizens of all member states to move freely, settle and establish businesses in, in other member states. <laughs> Now, I think um, the lessons uh, that my research brought to the fore in Ghana and Tanzania in the immediate uh, post-colonial period um, is that in order to build a nation, um, groups of uh, uh, people that were ruled as separate and even antagonistic entities by uh, colonial uh, rulers um, were brought together um, in order to forge a nation. Now, because the movements that led the anti-colonial struggles in both Ghana and Tanzania were made up of workers, peasants, the unemployed, and different categories of ordinary people in urban and rural areas, uh, from different ethnic um, identities, from diverse geographical origins, including people from other quote-unquote territories or colonial uh, dependencies or, 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 or possessions, the outlook of these movements were broad and all-inclusive. It meant that they did not proceed from the assumption that people were part of a society based on their ethnic origin. The making of the nation therefore privileged social transformation, commitment and livelihood over the colonial emphasis on origins and, and division. Solidarity and the needs of people uh, uh, are of central importance here because the notion of belonging is not based on autochtonity, on unchanging essence, but on residency and one's commitment. So here, citizenship uh, is something which is seen as a function of existence in the public sphere. It's not something which is seen as an ancestral right that some people are excluded from, you know, uh, by virtue of, of birth. <clears throat> now, I think if we draw on these lessons for today, I think in the midst of the coronavirus, states on the continent have to take the heterogeneity of their populace as the starting point Migration, as I said earlier, is a norm and has always been a norm. So policies have to be driven by where states find themselves, what is the makeup of the population. We know, for example, that African states have become more heterogeneous than they ever were, right? Now, if a policy is to respond to this reality, then it cannot proceed from the notion that some people are eternal insiders while some people are eternal outsiders. Because I think coronavirus, more than actually the anti-colonial struggle, is showing the limits of exclusion. Because if anyone is excluded, everyone is at risk. <laughs>